Hello and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be taking a little look at paperback cover art. Now I actually only have a couple of bits of original art, such as uh, this this like pan cover here uh, by Hans Helwig. But I think it's a fascinating subject, and I'd certainly you know wish I owned a bit more to be honest. But I don't really have the space to display it, so I'm not overly worried. But it's always nice to have a few bits, and they do really complement your book collection. So anyway, that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. So the first bit of artwork we're going to look at today is this one by W. Francis Phillips. And it's the cover to the New English Library book, Three's Company, by Alfred Duggan. So it's set in the Roman times, as you can see here. I think the first thing that strikes me about this is how big the actual piece of artwork is compared to the size of the actual finished product on the paperback. Uh, really quite massive, isn't it? I know it's a wraparound, but even so. Um, beautiful detail on it. In fact, a lot of the detail seems to have been lost once the book's been printed. This is exactly how I received it with uh, the painting in like a small mount, as you can see it. Francis Phillips did loads and loads of books for uh, Pan up to about 1970, 71, and then he went into children's books and then he started doing lots of jackets for the New English Library. But some of his, his Pan jackets are, are fantastic. Um, I really like his one they did for the identity of Jack the Ripper. Um, and um, he did a lot of Saint jackets, some of the Tail and Agatha Christie ones before they moved into, uh, Pam moved into photograph covers. Um, and a lot of them are sort of montages where they're made up of a few inanimate objects. And then they're put, all those objects are, are put into one picture. Um, and that's what he was sort of famous for. This one is a bit of a departure from that, really. It's got the main sort of character in the foreground there. And then obviously like the, the Roman army in the background. One of his best covers is he did one to the, I think it's the third Pan Book of Horror Stories, which has got this like gargoyle coming out from under a slab. That's a really memorable one. But my most favourite one that he ever did was the cover to the first paperback printing of The Rats by New English Library again. I think it was 1975, 1976. R almost iconic, that particular jacket. It's probably my, my favourite one that he ever did. Um, really, really great artist, uh, and certainly one that I I enjoy. Um, I have dug out uh, my copy of Cover Me, so we'll have a look through that artist in a bit more detail now. Some of the the pan books they did. So I dug out my uh, my copy of Cover Me, the fantastic book on uh, pan cover art, and. I've done it because there's not a lot about these artists online. Um, you can't just go to a Wikipedia page and, and see what someone's put about them because, or written about them because it's just, they just don't exist. But this is, um, you know, predominantly on their pan work, but it is still nice to sort of have a look and uh, just see what they were all about. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to read it word for word, but it basically says um, yeah, he was famous for his still life paintings. And there's the mysterious affair at Styles there where he's taken distinctive elements from from the plot and uh, put them all into the uh, the cover. There's that really nice uh, identity of Jack the Ripper, which I did thankfully get a copy of quite recently. Um, yeah, so it says the majority of Phillips's covers for Pan feature a still life composition of three or four key items, such as a gun, a tube of lipstick, a cup of coffee, um, all painted from a close angle in flat, bold colors with bright highlights for any shiny surfaces. I think that sums it up perfectly. There's his uh, cover to Evil Under the Sun. It's another really, really nice one. So he did quite a lot of uh, Agatha Christie titles. And uh, did the, the Carter Dixons as well. Bit of science fiction, Guardians of Time. This is all towards the end of the late 60s. Oh, it does mention there he did the third pan book of horror stories, which was the one I thought, the monster coming out from the uh, the gravestone. Fantastic stuff. I really like his Saint Jackets as well. Yeah, great, great artist. Really, really pr prolific. Did lots and lots of stuff. So this one is really nice. And this is by Hans Helwig. Um, it's the cover to the uh, the 60s book, A Bomb in the Attic. Let's see exactly when this one came out. It was uh, published by Pan in 1964. And I've put the original book next to the 
original artwork here. And I do particularly like this one because um, it was one of the books that, um, or one of the bits of cover art that surfaced recently, uh, which had the uh, the lettering still intact. So it does look like a, a miniature version of the pan cover there, which is really nice. It's even got the six shillings Australia on the back there, where they've sort of reused the, the cover artwork as well. Really uh, interesting, all the little notes in here. Um, Same 45% black tint, spine 75 degrees black plus 45 degrees red. Lettering without colophon, solid yellow, drop in tones. So this was the design for the back cover, which sadly isn't there. But you can imagine, there it was. They would have had to have taken a photocopy of that and uh, popped it into that bit and then just added all the lettering to do the back cover there. So this is going to look really good when I've got it uh, framed up. Not exactly sure where I'm going to stick it because... Like, I mean, collecting cover art is all well and good, but um, it takes up so much room. And if you haven't got stacks of space, then it can be uh, can be quite tricky. So Hans Helwig was also very, very prolific. Um, he sadly passed away in June 2008, and a lot of his stuff has surfaced. So uh, it's quite, quite incredible. Um, there's, there's, there's quite a lot around at the moment, and uh, that's why I was quite lucky to get my copy of... Uh, uh, the bomb in the attic. Um, now there is a particular dealer, so I'll just go and get the uh, information on him now. So the bomb in the attic piece came from a little uh, unearthing of Hans Helwig artwork. And um, the majority of it went into the hands of Cheltenham Rare Books with a chap called Mark, a very knowledgeable uh, book dealer. And um, he did say um, I could pass on a little favour to my viewers. So he's got quite a bit more pan artwork. By the time you see this, most of it should have now been sorted out. And he's got lots of pieces also by Hans Helwig. So if you do fancy getting a piece yourself, you can get some. Um, now he has said that if you go to his site and at the checkout, you type in the promotional code Jules 12, so that's J-U-L-E-S 12, he'll give you 12% off the website price and free postage. And these things are quite expensive to post, as you can imagine. Um, so that's quite a good offer there, 12% off plus free postage. So I'll put a link to Mark's website down below, and then don't forget just to apply that um, code and you can get yourself, maybe you'll find a bit yourself that you quite fancy. Certainly had a couple other pieces I really would have liked. Yeah, going back to Cover Me then, so this is a look at the Cover Me where they uh, show some of the other more famous Hans Helwig jackets and he didn't shy away from, uh, you know, doing some fantastic stuff. He was known for illustrating uh, Michael Bond's um, Olga de Polga, not the Paddington books, but the Olga de Polga series um, and did a few children's books as well. But he worked for them for many, many years and uh, I think has got a really distinctive style. Really, really great. Some of the books here, the Edgar Wallace, Richard Jessup. Yeah, he also did Leslie Charteris and uh, John Steinbeck. It's a nice one over there, isn't it? Great stuff. Um, a lot of his stuff... Um, some of his preliminary sketches and book designs and that um, are available on the PAN website uh, run by Tim at ticket.net. So if you haven't already checked that out, um, I believe at the moment uh, Tim is putting up like almost one a week, a sketch by Hans Helwig that he's managed to track down and see exactly where it's it's come from. So do check that out as well. But really, um, I mean, I'd love to collect more artwork if funds allowed but um it's not just the money you just don't see it around um, or maybe i'm possibly looking in, in in the wrong place i don't know so definitely do drop a comment below if you decide to go and buy some artwork yourself or if you've got some artwork tucked away that you might think i might fancy because i mean as long as it's not a fortune i wouldn't mind getting a few more pieces to uh you know potentially get framed up and put into my dream paperback library, which uh, I have a few sort of ideas about how I'm going to do this in the next few years. Um, maybe convert a spare room into a library room, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. So yeah, really just a touching 
look at original cover art and the couple of bits that I've got. I've got comic book art and things like that, which I've had for years, but actual paperback art, these are the only two bits I've got. And I think I've got the bug and I wouldn't mind getting a little bit more. So if you've got any, do drop me a line. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this little look at paperback cover artwork. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage paperback content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.